Hello, I'd like to show you some energy monitoring that I've been doing. This is just an introduction, really, to show you the hardware and what's possible. Uh, it's quite important with heat pumps, I think, to uh, monitor things because the energy efficiency is affected quite a lot by the working temperatures. So if you can record it when you're not there, in other words, overnight and over the weeks and months, you can actually look at graphs like this and do some analysis. This system, Open Energy Monitor, is um, it's open source um, system started by uh, Tristan Lee and Glyn Hudson up in North Wales. And they've um, come on quite a way since their original starting point, which was uh, putting uh, electric uh, current clamps around uh, consumer units for home energy use. But it's open source, so there's been lots of contributors to the whole project. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is start with a finishing point, which is the uh, graphs that, like this, you can display. So let's look at a graph and then look at some hardware. So what are we talking about here is plugging a device into your uh, near your heat pump to sense the temperatures mostly and power input and to, that gets sent to a website and it's displayed in real time on a graph like this. So you can see what's happening either in the same location or from a distance. This graph here is just, just an example. It's a dashboard that I've made up. You have to do it yourself. Uh, it can take a bit of time and it's not quite plug and play. There might be simpler methods of um, monitoring, but I found this to be really useful because it's, um, it's, it's um, very versatile and very expandable. Let's, so let me just talk about what it is. This is a um, period, a whole day period. You can zoom in and out. And what I've configured here is the shaded area, which is the power, the input power to the heat pump. This is a fixed speed, fairly old um, ground source heat pump. In fact, it's a spring source heat pump because it's got a very nice high temperature. So let's look at this first. This is the input power. I can see it's about 1.2 kilowatts. These two lines are the flow temperature and the return temperature. And it's, I think it's very important to have both. If you are just looking at the flow temperature, then you don't have that much confidence. Is there actually anything flowing in that pipe? But with, when you have the return as well, you get sort of two parallel lines. The difference between the two lines is the temperature difference uh, across the system. And by looking at that, you can pretty well estimate what flow rate is. As we can see here, they come together. It's what you expect because the heat pump's gone off. You can look at the standby power here, or rather the pump overrun, um, see if that's um, running when it should or more than it should. And then here we've got a, a period of cycling on and off. And that could be an issue we maybe want to minimize or, or not, depending on what we're, what we're trying to do. So that's a simple graph. And I will show you one more thing. This one below, in fact, involves a heat meter. So it's showing the actual heat output and the power input. So we can actually visually see the COP, which is really useful. And I was doing a little bit of analysis here to see what happens at the startup. And also in the middle there, there's various bits of statistics that you can take out of this, which is really useful. You can zoom into certain windows and sort of look at the performance and the average over that window. Right, enough of that. Um, as I say, that's the website to look at for a lot of information. There's uh, everything you want to know on that website. Um, so let me stop screen sharing and now show you the bits and pieces. So in the simplest monitor they've got is uh, Emon TX version 3, which looks a bit like that. 
this particular one has a Wi-Fi module in it, so you can power it up. It will broadcast itself. You can then log into that with a, with a PC, and then you can effectively log this into your router. So from then on, it's, it's talking to your router and it's sending data to it, which is sent to the EMON CMS website. So that device needs some sensor inputs, um, which are plugged in in various ports. And I'll show you them now. So firstly, the input power, which is most important, that's a typical current clamp, which is used to measure the current in the mains wire. That Normally, you put that around the tails in your incoming mains. So if you're monitoring a heat pump, you need to get it around a single conductor. So you may need an electrician to look at that. There may be a panel where there's some conductors you can get to. Um, bear in mind that some heat pumps, uh, particularly air source, can have an inside and an outside um, supply. So you really need to capture both where you can have multiple of these. Also, an immersion heater may be involved in the Legionella or the boost heating. You may want to record that either together or separately. But in the software, you can join the inputs up so that you've got various options. You can do what you like, really. Um, this is only measuring current if you only use this. But to improve matters, you can also use a voltage sensor. Uh, it's actually a power supply, an, an AC power supply, but it's used as a sensor. What that does is it allows for a thing called the power factor, which I won't go into, but it basically makes it more accurate for uh, loads, unusual loads like um, standby and um, um, well, power supplies and things where there's electronics involved, the power factor may not be unity. So that corrects it and it's quite accurate. But also the other way of doing it is to use one of, if I can find it, uh, one of these little things, which is an optical um, sensor, and that can go onto your um, kilowatt hour meter. You could have one particularly for the heat pump to measure that. Of course, you can add, if you've got this system, you can add that for your whole house just for your own interest or your PVs or whatever you like. So that's power input. The other thing, main thing, uh, temperature sensors. And I normally use, well, this is what is used for their system. These are digital. They, they generate the um, digital signal in the end. So there's no room for errors like with connections. It, they either work or they don't. And they are very accurate. Usually what I would do is um, take them together um, when I configure it. Normally use sort of four or six sensors for using around a heat pump. Um, and they usually show within 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degree um, Celsius, which is very good. So they are, they are nice and accurate and reliable. Um, it's nice to have a pair of on the flow and return to the heat pump and also the flow and return to the heating system because that's often what you're looking at, some, something in the way because you want the temperature at your heat pump to get all the way to your radiators, etc. cetera. Um, okay, so those, the way you connect them up, um, because they're digital, they all go to, in one connection. They all go together because they're coded. You can either use a device like this, which is um, then plugs into an Ethernet cable and plugs into your email TX. Um, or what I often do actually is I strip the wires back, solder them up, heat shrink them, and then um, I just connect them into a cable here. Um, this cable is, uh, sorry, there's a little terminal block you can connect things to. And this one has one temperature sensor at the moment and the pulse sensor that I've wired in. So that's the simplest system. If you want to go to slightly more complicated, you can use a nice device like this, which is the Emon Pi. It is um, it uses one of these, which is a, um, a Raspberry Pi. These were developed some time ago mostly sort of for educational purposes. It's basically a computer, a simple form of a computer. Um, 
So this, this device will take inputs like before. It will take um, CT current clamps. It'll take temperature sensors. Uh, this one you can um, either plug in directly to the Ethernet, basically plug it into your router, or you can use a Wi-Fi dongle and um, use, do it that way, configure it to your router. Now this has, well, a couple of things. It has a screen, which is quite useful, so you, it helps you set it up. It, it also has um, an RF um, module in it, so it can receive other things. It can, in fact, receive your Emon TX if you, or if you had even two of these, you can use that without the Wi-Fi module, and you can um, these can get picked up by one of these. But the the Emon Pi can also pick up an Emon TH. This is a battery powered temperature sensor. It does temperature and humidity, so you can place these around your house. You can move them about and do some testing that way. Uh, this also will pick up. Uh, pulses off a gas meter or um, electric meter. So you may use one of these and a Pi for measuring your input power. You can also actually use um, Raspberry Pi. It's a bit simpler, um, a bit cheaper, um, and there is a little module there, a Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, a radio module, which means that will then pick up these. So that's the Pi. Now, I'm still only talking about power input and temperatures, uh, which is expandable to other things, other devices around your house, meaning like your PV, I meant, um, for example. So it's quite useful. But if going back to the heat pump, the next level of complexity would be to use a heat meter, which is great because you could then actually tell what your COP is if you want to know it. Um, Often a lot of the diagnosis is really to do with knowing what the input is um, and the temperatures are. But this is, if you want to add this, it will only go with basically with the, the, the Pi version. And there's a module um, that interfaces this through M MBUS. The way this works is it has two accurate temperature sensors which go in the flow and the return. It measures the flow rate, the liquid going through, water or water glycol, and then it works out the actual heat in kilowatts. That's the heat um, added to that, the uh, water, or if it was cooling, it would, it would show that as well. So the thing to say about this thing is make sure, if you are fitting one, make sure it's big enough in that um, some of them um, are a bit smaller they introduce a restriction into your circuit, and that's really what you don't need. There's not much spare often. So you don't want to be adding a meter and adding a problem as well. Um, it's a matter of looking at the pressure drop in them and choosing one which is the right size. I think I have something about that on my website, actually. So um, what haven't I said? I'm sure I haven't said something. I was hoping to keep this quite short. We need to do one on uh, configuration because it can be a, you know, it's not quite plug and play. So it's all very well getting this set up. You might need a bit of help on that. So I'm going to try and do a simple one on that. And then later do some sort of analysis of what I've actually found by using this system. Um, what do I want to say? I think I've covered everything. And I'm going to say goodbye and thank you. <laughs>